Welcome ladies and gentlemen to this, your Gemini May 2023 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James Clairvoyant and I've done a number of one-on-one -on -one Clairvoyant readings for Geminis over the course of the last month from different parts of the world and if you would be interested in having a look to see what's involved in that, just have a look at the description box below. Now of course I charge for readings, I have to, but what I do not charge for and which which is free and which I do offer you as well is that I was bestowed with the spiritual gift of healing and if you would like to take advantage of a healing it's totally free no obligation you're not sold or recommended anything and if you want to have a look at what's involved in that it's in the description box below as well now as the subscribers know and always so good to see the subscribers I love to see you each month truly I do and as you know, we don't have any video advertisements breaking into this content, and so you get to enjoy the experience directly and without interruption. So now, without any further ado, let us take five cards, because five is all we need. They speak volumes to us in our readings, don't they? There's the Page of Cups, a particularly beautiful image, I must say. Here is the Six of Pentacles. That's here. Three of Cups, what else is there? The last two for you. And there's the Two of Swords. You know, I like the sword suit. I know a lot of people are frightened by it, but there's really no need to be. There's usually always something good to be found in the energies here in my readings. Now, let's see what there is finally for you. And it is this, the Ace of Wands. Well, as is our usual practice, why don't you come now? Sit down here next to me. We'll have a good close look at the imagery on these cards together while I do the reading for you. What an interesting looking spread for you. Quite a focus on emotion and relationships, I think. Let's have a look at this central energy, which is the Three of Cups. Now, what do we have here in this painting? Well, it's a bright sunny day. Three women are celebrating their friendship and spending time together as a united group. They are having fun playing with the three hoops that connect them and bind them together in their appreciation, honour and respect for one another. Now each woman is unique, just as you are, yet all share common goals and a sense of camaraderie. Now the good thing about this card is I'm just looking at the astrology of it and it is Mercury, your planet, in the sign of Cancer. And what I'm getting here is the development of emotion, abundance, fulfillment and celebration. There's a feeling of plenty and good fortune around you and there's a generosity going backwards and forwards. Certainly an emphasis on close friendships. I think you'll be quite open. And there's the realization of a dream, I think. Perhaps attending a workshop or support group. And there's a great sense of conception, procreation. So it's a very physical sense here and inner growth. Now, this really does depict the joys resulting from emotional nurturing and fulfillment. You are urged to embrace the simple joys in life and to welcome the love and support of other people. This energy stands for simple yet sublime pleasures that touch the depths of your heart. Now, because this card has appeared in the center here, it is a sign of intimate feelings, that you are deeply touched by the kindness of another, perhaps, or that you have gifts to offer to others, and you know what they are. It is a pleasure of being loved and returning love. I think this energy indicates that you must offer support, affection, love, and I think you could also have artistic talent, which could be given out to other people. It may be that you should express your love for somebody who is close to you. Mercury in Cancer. Cancer is very nurturing and Mercury is the sign of communication. So you should tell 
people that you love them. And I suspect that there are three very important people for whom at this time it is important that you do express your deep feeling and love for them. Now, healing and teaching, I think, is also symbolized here. Definitely, this relates to close friendships and to groups with a shared interest or those who celebrate or support one another. Now, very often when this card appears, it can refer to a particular person in your life, a friend, a family member, a, a companion or a partner. This is also calling for you to embrace life inwardly and externally and give unexpected gifts of joy or pleasure, whether to those you love or people you meet, or to at least take time to express appreciation of someone's unique qualities in an intimate and kind-hearted way. Now, in general terms, I think this energy here is teaching you to open fully to the bliss of life until your heart is overflowing into the hearts of others. Now, in your work life, I think this symbolizes teamwork, collaboration, and creative interaction or participation in your personal life. It is your inner streams propelling you to external success. This is also a theme for you at this time. I'm going to come to this Six of Pentacles, which speaks of success in a moment or two. Now, this can denote here that you will soon receive a, a bounty or a treasure is what I'm seeing. And so there's a sign of plenty coming up here to you from this energy. Do you know, these treasures are often the reward for past endeavors or actions, which only adds to the enjoyment because they are well-deserved. Now in love, this card represents openness, intimate communication, and the development of feelings, as well as passion, desire, and sensual vigor. Now, fittingly, there's also another Cups card around. I saw here this one, the Page of Cups. Lovely, lovely painting, that. And let's see what this has to say to you, shall we? Let me just get the vibe up from it. Well, the Page of Cups here wears a dress with a, with a floral print. Her hair is floating like waves down her back. She sits in front of the sea which represents emotions and feelings, as well as intuition. Now the page holds a cup in her hand, out of which, surprisingly, a fish looks back at her admiringly. In this special moment, the girl and the fish seem to be sharing an intimate bond of friendship. The fish responds to her beauty, and she takes delight in the fish's cheerful nature. So the, the initial things which are coming up to me here are very much of a, of a steady and a secure emotion, the crystallization of emotions into expressed feelings. Again, a great degree of physical vitality and vigor. You'll get the meaning of that. There's a gentleness here though. You'll be very graceful and you will be seen as being quite glamorous, whether a male or female. And there's a, there's a blissful sweetness in the air. Now, there is the time here, I think, when you are going to be aroused and you will certainly be seen as being adorable and very sexually attractive to other people. You'll be captivating, beautiful, bewitching almost. And yet there will still be with you that Gemini childlike approach to life, an innocence, a freedom, a joy, an effervescence, and a wonder at what the world has to offer. Now, because of her delicacy and innocence, this page here is actually unaware of her powers of seduction, enticing and captivating her victims, if I can't put it that way who adore that very innocence and worship her. 
Uh, she is, in a sense, the archetype of unrequited love. As I say, there's a great attraction to other, that other people are going to be attracted to you, but feel that you are sort of unattainable or untouchable. You will have irresistible beauty, but that beauty is expressed through transparency, sweetness, and natural inner exhilaration. You will be sensual and provocative. There's enchantment and seduction in the air, yet maybe you also have the ability to seduce yourself by your own freedom and love of life. Now, from a spiritual perspective, she represents your soul's longing to emerge into to depths and desires of your emotions and explore your inner dream world. The energy here is that yearning rather than the fulfillment of the desire is important. It is the scintillating hunger and glamour that captivates, drawing you into irresistible ecstasy. Now the process leads to the transformation and materialization of beauty and wonder through your emotions, just as the gentle water nourishes this fish that is communicating with the woman. Now, if this were badly placed, which it's not, I would see things like craving and frustration or jealousy, envy, or a lack of fulfillment, but there is no lack of fulfillment here. There is, in fact, fulfillment. Let's have a look and see what's sitting underneath her, shall we? And it is this card here. What are these birds doing? Well, there is the moon that's there. That's got to be of some interest, I think. Let's see. Let's see what's going on here. It looks like she's got a birdhouse on her head. Well, look, the, the woman that is leaning towards you and I here seems to be stuck in a situation, doesn't she? She's thinking about a problem, I think, but can't seem to find the solution. The problem is symbolized, I think, by the two birds sitting on top of the woman's wooden hat, which is also a birdhouse. Now the birds are arguing over which one should be allowed to go inside. Uh, since they are unable to come to a decision, they both have to stay outside in the cold night. Now the woman's eyes are covered with leaves, indicating the inability to see things clearly. Maybe that's to do with this moon. I'll get something more in a second. She has turned away to avoid dealing with her emotional uncertainty, perhaps. Now, the astrology of this card, coincidentally with that moon being there, but with this card placed down here, below this page, opposite the ace and, and touching onto the three of cups, this two of swords is the moon in Libra. Well, Libra is about balance and adjustment. And the moon, of course, deals with your subconscious. And that is that which, which lies below. There is here the great energy of thought about, about balance and counterbalance. But there is a peace restored. There is equality collaboration, some change and reorganization of things in your life and the way you think about things, and you'll be making intuitive choices and decisions. But there is mental stability and inner peace. There's a calmness with you, a confidence, and as was foreshadowed before, a sublime grace about you. And there's a discussion and connection of like minds here. And I also think that you'll be dealing with some contradictory points of view. This does refer to peace and equilibrium. It signifies that a, well, the, the 
that great balance and calm can be achieved. Now, this could refer to spiritual, mental or material peace, but I think it's really focused on emotional things here. Very much focused on the emotions in your relationships. This card is about arrangement, organizing and maintaining perfect balance between two seemingly contradictory perspectives or choices. You know, very often in our lives, opposites do attract. And therefore, when we come into relationship with people who are opposite to us, or who may be different to us in any event, then there is the balancing of contradictions involved, isn't there? And this is coming in here. Because by balancing the forces in your mind and apportioning justice from the Libra aspect and doing that compensation, uh, a movement around of weights, then I think a contradictory situation is going to be resolved peacefully. Uh, this is about the balance of polarities. And what I mean by that, you know how a, how a magnet has a positive and a negative aspect and they are seemingly never able to live in peace. Well, this is the case where you can obtain peace. And uh, this is also about determining truth from untruth. And so it can relate to deep discussions. Maybe you do need to have that deep and meaningful discussion with someone. And it can also be about making judgments. But this energy is, is telling you that you should employ good management and organize and arrange things to overcome an issue or solve a problem. Now, sometimes this card can be telling you that you are not seeing the truth or that something will appear only in your life when you make a firm choice. Now, this energy can reconcile internal and external events, allowing for a wish to be granted. But in general, this refers to, I think, the clarification of different positions different points of view, different energies. You know, every problem holds its own perfect solution, as you would have already have found out. And reaching the solution can sometimes involve sacrifice, giving up something. But this is the process that leads to inner peace and pleasure. And sometimes it can be painful, painful but pain holds the gift of beauty. And this energy also relates to the need to listen to another point of view or perhaps a warning. Just ask yourself this. Are you blocking people out or hiding your feelings by working together calmly and naturally? A connection of minds and hearts will be achieved. Now, on this same horizontal row as that is this. Now, I love the Ace of Wands. I'll tell you a secret. The Ace of Wands contains within it, if you were to put a microscope in it, every other court card and every other minor arcana card, card in the pack. It's all contained within the Ace of Wands because the Ace of Wands exists somewhere beyond space and time and yet not yet in heaven. It's the world in between. Now here we have a confident young woman looking at a big, what would you call that? A, that's a peony, I think. That great English poet, John Keats, who died in 1825. At the age of 25, the poetic genius who died at the age of, age of 25, spoke of the wealth of globed peonies in the second stanza of his beautiful poem, Ode on Melancholy. Anyway, maybe I'm just seeing it as a peony. You plant experts have probably got a better idea, but the plant is growing up into the heavens as the petals of the flower bloom wide open. And the plant stands for, I think, the imagination and ideas that are growing and expanding in your mind. And the book, I think that symbolizes the foundations on which 
new creative opportunities can develop. And I think that that book is inspiring and motivating this woman. Now, there are, there are some signs, I think, who are going to be important to you around this time. And they are Leo, they are Virgo, and they are Cancer. And what I'm seeing here is this pure essence of will here for you, a divine spark inside of you, a great energy and the power of creation, the creative force brought about almost by divine inspiration. There are new beginnings and a revitalizing power that awakens after all obstructions have been removed. There's a pioneering, adventurous side to you, and you'll have great courage. And in particular, you'll have great decisiveness, which is good because this thing said, when you make the decision, that is when things are going to appear and you'll have a great love of life. Now, these uh, ones suit, I think, speaks primarily to personal spiritual power and fulfillment. And this ace, is telling you that there is a surge of vitality and passion beginning in your life. It uh, speaks of a seed of fearless exuberance that has been planted in your life. The earliest spark of divine energy that will soon manifest into your material world full of power and possibility. Look, the divine wants you to have a good life. You are not an outcast. You are loved, and the divine wants you to live well. And there's nothing wrong with having the good things in life. It's an experience, it's what you do with it, that's what's important. It's how you respond to situations and respond to people. Now, as these aces are, as I mentioned, largely beyond our earthly understanding, this energy is at its very beginning stage and not just quite yet formulated, so you may not recognize it, but it's there. Now to harness this power, know that it is there. To harness it, you must have a goal or a framework to which you can direct that power. You see, your mind is so good, you think of a hundred things at once, but you've got to concentrate your energy, concentrate your thoughts. Now, you can be assured that because this card has turned up, that such energy is being offered to you. And to allow the free-flowing energies to have a creative outlet, you'll be revitalized by this power as it blazes your entire being with renewed radiance. Now, the ambition or desire to which you employ the power of this energy will be achieved by trusting in your own creative potential. Now, this potential could take almost any form, a leap in confidence, a burst of inspiration or enthusiasm, or a creative idea, or just by coming up with something new. And this energy represents a pioneering spirit and there's an opportunity to, well, there's an opportunity here that's stirring away in the background of your life. It's coming to you, it's on you, it's in, it just needs you to recognize. It's like those magic eye paintings. You see the paint, but you don't see what's in there. Look at it and see it. Now, by grasping this initiative with passion and courage, this new opportunity is going to manifest, I think, as a proposal or a gift or a work advancement, maybe a new spiritual inspiration. Now, in terms of relationships, I think it indicates that a new or existing relationship will bring deep passion and joy into your life. Now is the time to act boldly and take risks. Lean in to give that kiss, make that call, say those words, think originally and transform your fighting spirit into direct action for success. Now, I think that leaves us with what? It leaves us with, oh, speaking of success, let's have a look. 
A very Japanese theme going on here. Let's have a look. Here is the Six of Pentacles. Well, what's happening in the painting? Well, it, I think that this is about sharing and receiving. Now, the women are holding their cups, waiting patiently to get some tea. This is a Japanese tea ceremony, I would suppose. Now, the owner of the big teapot pours six drops of tea into each of the women's cups. Now, these scales here, do you see them on the side of the on the side of the teapot in the porcelain or whatever it is, there's Libra again. So it's very much about balancing. And I think relationships here, if you, your heart is where your wealth lies and from which your material greatness will be achieved. Now, I think that this teapot stands for the fairness in the man's distribution. Maybe in the future, the situation will change and he will be the one in need and the women will return his generosity. Now, astrologically, this is the moon in Taurus. Now, that's really good because the moon happens to be exalted in Taurus. Now, Taurus, of course, is ruled by Venus, which is the planet of beauty, relationship and money, if you didn't know that. And the moon, therefore, because it's exalted, comes in as an honored guest and gets to show off its best side and to be its best self, which is about providing nurturing, which is also in the case of Taurus, which likes material things and luxury. So they're well, well suited to each other. So again, here there's equilibrium of matter. There's prosperity, triumph, and generosity again, but there's a great feeling of material gain here, kindness and tolerance, a peace of mind again, a dawn of a new day, a self-awakening, overcoming a crisis, vibrancy and lots of communication from you. This has its origin, this strength and this success that I have here in your inner unconscious, which is due to the presence of the moon, which channels it from your higher self into material manifestation and external expression. Now the success is the flow of thick, warm lifeblood, the blood of the Holy Grail, when this energy appears, something wonderful is about to happen. On a material level, this card signifies a windfall or reaping of rewards and material gain. Its primary characteristics are abundance, generosity and prosperity, full of promise and delight. So here, visualize success filling your heart and it also signifies helping others and working as a team, but a particularly successful time for you in all areas of your life, not just in the emotional, but in the material as well. What a fantastic spread of cards for you. Good job, you. I trust you enjoyed that as much as I did providing it to you. I certainly enjoyed providing that reading to you. I always do, though, don't I? I love to see you, and thank you for having me in your in your home. I really do appreciate it and I appreciate the, um, the confidence that you place in me and the warmth which you show to me. Now, I'm not going to see you again probably unless you contact me for a reading or for a healing until next month. But until then, remember one thing and one thing only and it is this, that you are a legend. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. And until then, it's bye for now.